If you're long the market, you're probably not happy today, starting the trading week with a triple-digit loss on the Dow on Wall Street. We're also underwater in Toronto. But for some investors, this could actually be the signs of a healthy pullback and opportunity. Joining us now for her perspective is the head of trading and barometer capital management, Diana Avigdor. Good to see you, Diana. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for having me. So you're not too rattled by what we're seeing today in the market. So why do you think it's a healthy little pullback here? I almost saw a sigh of relief that the market's down a little bit today, and I don't mean it in a bad way. It's we've been holding our breath to see when, if this was going to happen. So I want to remind investors the year-to-date numbers. The S&P is up a little over 8% year-to-date. TSX is up a little over 11% year-to-date. China's up 26% year to date. So we've had some very, very big rallies. And if I was to take these numbers to December 26th, which was the first day of the rally, those numbers are even higher. And on the sector basis, for example, semiconductors, they're up even more. So you started out by saying for those that are invested, they're not happy today. They're not happy today. They're down a little bit, but they should be very happy year to date. What do you make of the fact every day, and I've joked about whether I need a little needle that I physically move between we're optimistic about China and the United States today or we're pessimistic about China and the United States today. <laughs> when we finally get a deal, will it even matter? I mean, is all that priced in already? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And I think that the market is, um, a lot of people are struggling with that question. I honestly don't know. I think, though, if I was to have to pick West Side, I think that the market will be very happy and when a trade deal is actually signed. I can't see markets going down on that. I certainly do see more downside if things don't come through. So to your point, probably a lot of it is priced in, but it's definitely never going to be a negative. That's the one thing that makes us um, kind of positive on the market, because you have this uh, trade deal, which is mostly priced in, but a lack of it or, or an agreement of it is not going to take the market down. Another thing that makes us uh, positive on the market is the fact that the economic data that's coming out that's kind of negative um, is really reflecting uh, the market that is already traded back at the uh, end of 2018. So we're now getting the reason. We're getting we're now getting the reason why the market was down back in 2018. So the market's no longer going down on that. So um, I guess um, what I'm trying to prove is that if the market was to stay in a range bound um, sort of um, environment for the next few weeks, um, even down a little bit like we see today, that's actually a healthy check back because the rally to now um, has really left a lot of people uninvested. We see a nine-year high in money market um, um, assets. Um, so a lot of, we see low leverage, we see low um, investor interest, a lot of fear. So we know that a lot of people have not made money. So a little bit of a check back might actually uh, encourage people to reinvest some of the funds that they raised back in Q4-18. I find it interesting that you say that, that a lot of people, despite the rally we've had, are still uninvested. Have we not recovered from the scars of 10 years ago? I mean, that, that was quite a beating that a lot of our portfolios took. And I don't know if a lot of people fully trust again in the market moves after what they saw in 2007, 2008. Uh, you know what, Greg, that's exactly, you're touching on a very, very great point. Um, it's in most people's DNA right now to be uh, market bears. Um, you know, the rally since the great financial crisis has been a very hated rally. Um, nowhere, so I've been around trading back in the late 90s and 2000 when, um, when it was a tech bubble. Everybody was euphoric, everybody was bullish, everybody was invested, everybody loved the market. I haven't seen at a 10 year period, such as the last 10 year, where everybody hated the market and went up and into it, kicking and screaming. So it's in our DNA. So. You know, Greg, when we have a scare like uh, Q418, people, it's almost like, oh, I told you so. I told you the market was going to get me. And so they don't hurry to put it back in. And so we've seen these year-to-date numbers that I mentioned earlier, and a lot of people are, are not yet convinced. Now, markets have rallied a lot, and technically they're at levels which should be respected for a check back. If it was going to check back, this is as good a place as any and it would give people opportunities to come in. There aren't that many people out there 
or models or you know we talk about the black box traders and quantitative traders there aren't that many people that are heavily invested or leveraged to be able to take the market down in the way that it did in Q4 18 um, so there aren't that many people invested means that there is some money um, that are, is going to come to the market there also aren't many options uh, mm -hmm. interest rates are not coming down I don't think that the bar market is going to give investors the kind of uh, return that they need. <clears throat> sure, yields are as highest <clears throat> as, as they've been, uh, or U.S. 10-year yields are the highest they are uh, globally if you, if you needed some yield. That's why the U.S. dollar is staying up where it is. But um, really, if you're thinking, if you're not thinking that there's going to be a recession, so if you do not believe that the, mar the economy is going into a recession, I think the equity markets are right now, even if it check back, in a uh, very good uh, buying opportunity. You said off the top, Diana, that, you know, we've been doing pretty well in Toronto. We're up 12% year to date. Uh, I, sometimes when I talk to people who are bullish on the markets, but they're not always bullish on Canada. They, they believe the Wall Street story. They don't believe the Bay Street story. Geographically speaking, what, what countries, what areas are you more excited about? Do you have faith in us here in Canada? I have a little bit of faith in us. <laughs> I do. Um, the, the problem always with the Canadian stock market is this. It's not a diversified enough stock market and that's why asset managers go outside of it to diversify. So if you want energy, um, uh, some decent financials with good yield, some good industrials, um, say the rails, um, and our newly found sector, the cannabis sector, um, you can utilize Canada for, for that. We've, had, we've put on uh, some wreath exposure as of the beginning of the year as well, so that's worked really well. But if you want healthcare, uh, technology, um, some more industrials, uh, defense, uh, Boeing and such, you must go outside of Canada in order to gain exposure to the globally best companies out there. FANG, uh, you know, Amazon, Netflix, uh, you know, uh, software, Microsoft, those kind of names. So if you want a truly diversified portfolio with all the best in it, uh, some of it has to be Canada, but some of it you have to step outside. So in answer to your question, um, we believe North America is still the best place to be. You have the most decent economic number with the most decent GDP growth, uh, with valuations that are okay, especially in the cyclicals. Uh, the cyclicals right now at, uh, relative to the S&P, the valuation relative to the S&P is as low as it's been in a very, very long time and quite at extremes. So if you don't believe that the economy is going in a recession, some of these investments are quite attractive. All right, Dan, Diana, great to catch up with you. Thank you very much for having me. It was the head of trading of Barometer Capital Management, Diana Avigdor.